несколько минут мы начнем нашу работу. Я пока попросила бы вас, если вы можете латиницей написать свое имя, или можно это сделать на русском языке, но напишите свое имя, фамилию, потому что у некоторых видны названия либо организации, либо какие-то аббревиатуры, потому что так будет, мне кажется, нам комфортнее общаться. Вот, я сразу хочу сказать, что внизу у вашей панели есть кнопка «Перевод», и вы можете там выбирать русский либо английский, потому что вебинар у нас будет как на русском, так и на английском языке. Основные докладчики будут выступать на английском языке, поэтому в нужный момент вам нужно будет перевести, переключиться на русский язык, чтобы слушать выступающих через переводчика. Если вы будете слушать выступающих на английском языке, тогда вы выбираете английский язык. Да, мы сейчас включим. Я все время забываю, не проблема. Creative Community Services, three unique stories from Norway. We are very happy that it's, uh, so, so many participants uh, came to hear, uh, hear us today. Uh, this webinar is um, part of um, a collaboration project with the name Nordic and Russian NGOs, rendering high quality social services. Uh, the project's goal is to enhance inclusiveness and empowerment of the civil society in Russia and Nordic countries through exchange of experience between NGOs. During the project, uh, the organizations are sharing their uh, experience with support of socially vulnerable groups and their ways to protect the rights of those groups. Uh, the project is supported by Nordic Council of Ministers and uh, the project activities involve uh, Northwest Russia, uh, Norway, uh, Finland and Denmark, four countries. For more information about the project, please check ngobridges.com. Uh, hope you all have chosen the Russian language and um, you hear my voice uh, with uh, synchronized translations. A translation. Uh, if not, click the button on the right side down on your screen uh, with the Russian flag. Uh, it says Russian, and then you will hear the Russian translation. Yes. Uh, thank you, Tatiana. Uh, today we will listen uh, to three stories from Norway, and you can ask your questions in the chat. Uh, and now let me introduce the first speaker, uh, Turian Bredenbeck. Here, sitting right to the right of me, and he is from Food Bank in Rogaland, or as we call it in the region, Mat Central in Rogaland. Please welcome Toria. Thank. Yeah, my name is uh, Toria Bredenbeck, and I am daily uh, leader for Mat Central Rogaland, as a food bank uh, Rogaland. Uh, our food bank in uh, Rogaland was established, established uh, in November 2018, uh, two years ago. And uh, there has been food bank, food banks in Norway since uh, 2013 uh, in Oslo and in uh, Bergen. Uh, our, our goal is uh, to collect surplus food from the food industry and uh, give that out to people in need uh, in our community. Uh, the food waste in Norway is uh, very high, about one third of all food produced in our country is never been, being eaten, it's gonna be thrown away. 
as waste. Uh, and the vol volume on this uh, food waste in Norway is about 395,000 tons each year. It's, that's about 800 million meals per, per year. Uh, we are also working against poverty in Norway and uh, especially into families with ch children who live in, uh, in poverty. Uh, so it's, it's actually a very simple concept. Uh, we, as I said, we collect and, uh, and uh, rescue food uh, that is not going to be sold to the stores for shopping. Uh, that can be overproduction, it can be uh, something wrong with the, with the carton, emballage, yeah, package. package in the, the food and some other things that is not, uh, does not give any meaning to throw it away, but that's the rules in the food business and uh, a lot of the food was produced does not never come to the, to the stores. Um, so we, we collect that to, to our uh, food bank in Rogaland and uh, we have uh, um, agreements with uh, about 50 uh, volunteer organizations who is having a kind of work uh, against people in our community who is in need for something. It can be people who live in a uh, drug, uh, Rus misbruk, also drugs, drug abuse, drug abuse uh, people who is suffering from uh, sickle, uh, psychic uh, health and, and, uh, and poverty. Um, and then they, they will come to our food bank and collect the food they need to help their people who they are taking care of. Questions? <laughs> uh, in Norway today, there is about seven uh, food banks. And all the food banks in Norway are rescuing about 3,000 ton each year. 3,000 ton. And if you remember what the total waste in Norway was, uh, who was about almost 400,000 tons. Uh, you understand that we are just uh, doing uh, in the top of the earth. It's less than one. Cent. Yeah, it's, it's less. Yeah. Uh, so we, we rescue less than 1% of the total waste in Norway. In, in our food bank in Rogaland, uh, we rescue and deliver out about 400 tons uh, this year, about 400 tons. So we know that we, uh, through our food bank, uh, do a lot of good things for a lot of people in our uh, community. Uh, and as I said, we have about 50 organizations who is uh, coming to us to collect the food and uh, some of the organizations are very large and helping a lot of people and some other organizations are small and just take care of 10 or 15 uh, people. Uh, the largest organizations that use us is uh, the organizations uh, which stand behind the food bank Rogaland and that is uh, Salvation Army, it is uh, Kirkens Bymission and it's Bjarte for Sannes, uh, who shall talk a little bit later. And it's an uh, organization called Evangelia Center, who is working with uh, Rus behandling. Uh, uh, drug, uh, drug addiction. Uh, yeah, drug addiction. Drug, 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 drug Try to rescue them. Try to rescue people mm -hmm. out of the drug uh, world. <laughs> um, yeah. 
we have, as I said, we had just, we had just been uh, working for two years and we have uh, had a lot of uh, growing uh, uh, there's, uh, we are growing more people need more food and the society is uh, after the corona uh, pandemic we have uh, experienced a very large uh, race of the the disposal demand um, in one month in april we had uh, rescued and, and delivered out 55 tons in one month and before we started the the food bank we did a marketing uh, research and uh, we thought we were gonna rescue and deliver out between eight and ten tons each month uh, between eight and ten tons each month and also in april april we deliver out 55 tons so very much more food than we could imagine. Um, so, uh, but, but it, it was probably a special situation for the April. Uh, uh, it's uh, probably mm -hmm. some less demand, uh, like average each month. Yeah. Or does it still keep on that high level since April? No, no, not uh, not as much as that. Yeah, but uh, before the pandemic, we had an average uh, volume in about thirty tons each month, who still is about uh, three times as much as we thought before we started. Uh, but now, after the uh, pandemic, uh, it was a peak in uh, in April. As I said, with 55 tons, but it had stabilized stabilized in about uh, 40 40 tons each month. So we have had a, a growth, but not as much as 55. But you tons. still keep it uh, quite high, 40 tons. Yeah. It's four times uh, yeah. more than you suggested in, mm -hmm. in the beginning. Yeah. Um, okay. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the beginning, you said it was a marketing research. Mm -hmm. uh, we have time. Yes. Yeah. From, yeah. Uh, what do you tell tell um, the people how you do uh, marketing research, like in the short yes. terms? I can tell, and it's very simple. We just <laughs> sat down, pick up the phone, and called some organizations that we knew. Okay. did some help with food so that's a manual way to do it mm. and we googled and we did some uh, try to do some research mm -hmm. but it was very manually and uh, we was a group of people who, who did this marketing research but uh, we landed on a amount on eight ten tons each month as we thought was very high yeah when we presented that a volume to the Oktagsgivar, to the Stavanger Kommune and the Starvation Army who asked for this uh, project. Uh, they almost didn't believe that there was a need of that much as eight to ten tons each month. What do they say now? No, <laughs> they, uh, they still can't months. believe it. <laughs> no. So uh, it has been a lot uh, larger and a lot more need out there from uh, people that we that we taught before we started yeah. mm. uh, and uh, i know that you have mentioned uh, for me uh, that it's um, it's not a unique uh, um, organization for rogaland it's a lot of food banks mm. all around in the world yeah. and it's a few food banks in norway and uh, so if someone in Russia would like to, to use your model, they just mm. have to ask a food bank uh, headquarters yeah. uh, we, for permission or yeah. how, how do they do uh, that? Uh, we have a, a head organization who is called uh, Mart Central, or food 
food banks Norway. Mm -hmm. That's our, our overbuilding. And uh, they will sit on information for the international concept, yeah. which is called Food Bank International. So I know there are food banks in uh, UK, it's food banks in uh, Italy, in France, and several countries. Yeah. So it's a concept called Food Banks International. So it's a problem common for many countries. Yeah. So it's. Uh, it's yeah. food that is uh, to be wasted and it's people who need food. Yeah. So it's actually very simple, right? Yeah. And, and the big uh, issue here really is that all that food we are talking about, was, uh, which was going to, to waste, it's a completely 100% good food. Uh, the only thing is that it didn't get to the store because of there was something wrong with the package or that it was overproduction, uh, the stores couldn't buy more. Yeah. So that's, the, it's, it, it's, in Norway there is producing a lot of, lot of more food than is gonna be sold uh, through the stores. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, do they have any questions? Uh, they say that they didn't hear uh, haven't heard about such projects in Russia. Um, I think it's to Google it. Yeah, right. I, to I'm Google the... Yeah, I, I am sorry. I, I don't know about uh, these things in Russia, but the only thing I know that there is a concept called Food Banks International, and I think all of the food banks in that international uh, cluster have this logo here with. Uh, with a heart and a oh. bread and a bread oh. and a hand. Okay. It's cool logo. Mm. <laughs> really like it. We've got a new question. Um, uh, uh, is it any quality control uh, for food that you uh, distribute? Yeah. How, uh, how is it uh, going? We have uh, procedures and uh, rules uh, how we are gonna. Uh, handle the food that we get into us. And in Norway, it's Martilsyne that is setting those rules. And we have a really large fridge and we have a large cool, uh, cooling room and we have one store for the dry food. So all those uh, categories of food is, is having strict rules what, how, is that, uh, how is gonna be uh, handled. Yeah. So we've yeah. been in that uh, cool room and took a picture with yeah. your words and yeah. it was really cold there. <laughs> but does uh, Martelsyne comes and checks you? Uh, Martelsyne, uh, who is the Norway's uh, kind of uh, control oh, center, okay. that they have been there once and, and, and they were uh, with us when we started the food bank. Okay. And they controlled that it was clean enough and that we had uh, Oxlack, uh, uh, posters on yeah. the wall, which tells the, the rules and regulament for for who food is going to be uh, handled. Yeah. yeah. So good. Yes. We have uh, one more, a uh, few more questions actually. What are the main challenges with starting and running a food bank? The main, yeah, the main challenge for us, uh, or or probably all the food banks, is that. Uh, uh, we are actually delivering out, you can imagine, 50 tons of food that represent a lot of value in in uh, in, uh, yeah. in rubles. <laughs> uh, so that food will have cost a lot of money to buy in in the stores, but we deliver all the, all that food out free of charge for the organizations. Uh, so the main challenge for the food bank Ogala, is to, to do to find the funding to get the finance the organization because we have very few employees with us it's only me and another uh, person who is actually employed with salary uh, all the other people who works with us is volunteers or people who is doing some training for the we have enough uh, to get out in the uh, So 
this is the material to get funding for to to pay for the rent for the house rent to pay for the uh, electricity to to run the fridge and the freezer and uh, we have a lorry that needs uh, to be have diesel and so on so we have a cost uh, but uh, that's the main challenge to get funding for this uh, yeah. Uh, Job. I'm afraid we don't have time to answer uh, more questions. I'm very sorry, but we need to uh, maybe at the end. To, uh, yeah, maybe yeah. If the, if in the end we have more time. And thank you very much. Uh, 400 tons through 50 volunteer organizations. It's uh, an, it's very impressive job. I must say. Thank you very much. And the next um, the next organization we would like to introduce. Uh, it's hard for sunness, uh, and um, we have uh, Maria Vestershe from uh, Heart for Sunness, and I think we'll start with the movie. Yeah, uh, can you please uh, unable to share the screen? Me надо поделиться экраном. We have some technical problems. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Windows Yes. Now we'll see the movie. Enjoy. Share computer. Share. Share. Then 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 Hjertet for Sandnes ble etablert i 2016 med et stort ønske om å bety en forskjell for byen vår. Vi kan i dag tilby ulike aktiviteter rettet mot barnefamilier, de som trenger å fylle dagene med noe. Vi har nettverkstreff, musikkafé, så har vi også en del som er i arbeidspraksis, pluss mange frivillige. Uten frivillige så hadde vi aldri kunnet drive dette arbeidet. Og per i dag så har vi over 200 frivillige som gjør en eller annen tjeneste i Hjertet for Sandnes i løpet av året. Café nummer 13 er en café for husmusbrukere i Sannes. Det er et samarbeid mellom Hjertet for Sannes og Klippen. Her får brukerne våre to ganger i uken et varmt måltid mat og tilgang til klær og ekstra mat. Til og med en dusj. Vi i Hjertet for Sannes er en av medstifterne av matsentralen i Rogaland. Vi tar ut mange titals ton mat hvert år som brukerne våre får glede av. Blant annet i våre aktiviteter som hjertelagere, kafé nummer 13, hjerteverkstedet og andre aktiviteter som vi har. De som har havnet utenfor arbeidslivet ønsker vi å strekke ut en ekstra hånd til. Derfor er arbeidstrening en trygg måte å starte sitt nye arbeidsliv på igjen. Vi i Hjertet for Sandnes ønsker våre deltakere en meningsfull hverdag. I dag har vi mange personer på arbeidstrening. Noen er i kjøkkenavdelingen, noen i grafisk avdeling, og i kreativ avdeling, og til og med i søm og rede seg. Jam Musikkafé er en hengeplass for ungdom som enten er musikalske og liker å jamme, eller bare folk som vil være sosiale, spiller billiard, har for god musikk eller kjøpe mat i kaféen. Vi er åpent hver onsdag fra 6 til 9. På hjertelagret kan enslige forsørgere og vanskelig stilte barnefamilie få hjelp. Vi lager et varmt mål til mat til alle, og så får familien en bærepose med dagligvare med seg hjem. De kan også finne brukte klær og barneutstyr i kjelleren. Vi har etter hvert fått en del klær til voksne som deles ut. Det er mange som har sagt at de i perioder har vært helt avhengig av den hjelpen de har fått. Vi har flere hundre registrerte mottakere på hjertelagere. Vi arrangerer årlig en julekveld for de som trenger en ekstra oppmuntring i byen vår. Vi samler ca. 600 gjester og frivillige. Det er flott musikk, underholdning, julemiddag, og så deler vi ut julegaver til store og små. Byens kjøpesenter inviterer deg til å være med og gi en julegave til noen som trenger det. Et annet årlig arrangement vi har er Hjerte for Sannhetsaksjonen. Her samler vi inn penger til alt arbeidet som vi driver. 
Under auktionen säljer vi hemmebakst, olika strickar plagg och juledekorationer. I förkant har vi loddsalg med flotte premier. Vi är er väldigt tacksämliga för att regionens näringsliv och privata stiller upp med premierna. Uh, welcome, uh, Maria Vestasha from Harpisanes. Thank you. Um, I'm, yes. Um, I was asked to tell you a bit about how our organization was founded. And so I'm going to tell you a bit about that first. Um, it was founded in 2016. And it was, uh, it was very important for us to have an organization that could help us. And uh, so we, are, we were closely connected to the local Pentecostal church. Together with the church, we were running a, a soup kitchen, which you can see on the, uh, on the screen. Uh, we were helping people with drug addiction and other issues and problems. Uh, they have. Uh, it's named Café Number 13. Uh, we offer them a healthy meal and a warm shower and a friendly talk. Uh, we wanted to give them a helping hand uh, because we saw that a lot of people in our city didn't have what they needed to uh, in their lives. Um, so we hired a cook and uh, she makes uh, hot meals for them uh, two, two, twice a week. Uh, we wanted also to provide a good and safe environment for them. Uh, so that they can have a free place they could come twice a week. Um, uh, as the cafe grew, a lot of people came and uh, we saw that these uh, people had other needs too. Uh, they had needs for uh, friends. So we started a networking uh, cafeteria and uh, also uh, a group that rides their bikes. They also attended um, uh, a ride, a local ride called Norsjøritte. Uh, actually, to your new road, this, you did this once, so you felt it. It's quite hard, actually. <laughs> um, 92 kilometers. Hard. <laughs> and all the activities are driven by volunteers, because we believe that uh, everyone has something they can give to others. Every person has the resources that you can use for someone else to grow. So uh, we don't hire a lot of people to do our activities. We, uh, we find volunteers who want to grow and want to use their skills and their capacity to uh, help others. Uh, so then we, uh, we saw to the, the need, you can change them. Yes, we saw the need to also do other activities to bring people into growth. And um, so this is from our art class. Uh, for people who have mental issues and uh, addictions, who can, uh, who can do um, art and come together. And uh, sometimes it's not easy to talk to people, but if you have an activity to do together, you can just be in the same room and be social without the need to, um, to talk to someone. So that's, they come with all kinds of different needs. And we just develop our um, activities according to what people need when they come to us. We try to get to know them and we try to see them and talk to them and, and bring out the best and, and we, we make activities. And sometimes when we find that there are here, you have resources, maybe you want to be a volunteer. And so they can grow from uh, uh, being one of um, the users that, that come with a, with a need and they can become a volunteer giving uh, to others and helping others to grow. Uh, at this uh, art class, we also had a, a, a communication with Sannes Commune uh, because uh, the commune doesn't have many activities. They have some, but they needed more activities for people with mental issues. So they, um, they bring some of their um, um, clients or people that they want to help, we can bring, it, bring them to our art class. Yes. Uh, take the next picture. Uh, Heart for Sonics is uh, one out of uh, four founding organizations of the Food Central, the Food Bank. And this is because the Food Bank doesn't give out food to individuals 
uh, only distributes food to organizations. So we wanted to give it to individuals. So this is from our cafe, it's called the Heart Cafe. We give out food and um, uh, give people a good talk. We also have some fruit and, and hot meals we give them. And um, uh, we see that many people want to live healthy, but they don't have the money to buy healthy food. It's, uh, it's, um, it's cheap to buy food with a lot of sugar and, and bad food. It's more expensive to buy the healthy vegetables and fruit. So this is what we focus on, helping people, not just by um, uh, knowledge about how to live healthy, but, the, um, but help them to be able to live healthy by eating healthy. And as this grew, we had 400 families registered uh, to be receivers of the food we give out. We also saw that we needed to give them more than just food because this was people, many of them are refugees and uh, people in low income families. So we wanted to give them more. I want to give them clothing and, and um, children accessories and toys and um, things they need for family life. So we, uh, we opened up a Facebook site where we announced uh, and asked for people to donate uh, used clothing and uh, children stuff that they needed. Um, and we got in really a lot <laughs> into our, our, our areas. Our rooms were filled up with uh, used clothing and we had volunteers coming to organize it, put it up on, on the hangers and shelves. And um, we also help the families with the celebrating birthdays for their kids. And it's all about helping these low in income families to have a, a nice life and to give them what, they're, what the parents want to give their kids. You want to give them a nice birthday celebration. Yes, the next slide. We want our volunteers to go a journey with us. We, just, we don't want them just to be uh, receivers. We want them to also help others. So we, we try to uh, make individual uh, journeys for the volunteers and for the people that come to our activities. And um, we have families, we have singles, we have couples, we have young and old uh, volunteers who work with us. And all of them, many of them came to us with a need and then we talk to them and ask them, what, what do you do? What do you like to do? And we try to make a journey for them to grow, to grow into a bigger person, to a person who can help others. And uh, so we work in this individual level with people. Yes. Uh, the next slide. These are some of the, um, uh, we, we work together with <laughs> other organizations. It's the Food Bank and it's Sunnis Commune, of course. There's also the um, employment service and women's shelters, uh, refugee centers, social services, and uh, the church, which um, gave us the housing and the need. We, we needed start the help in the start uh, with the cafeteria because it's, it's not easy to have the money to just start an organization and to start working. So the church really helped us with the, the, fun, with the, the money to do the job. <laughs> yes. And then the last slide. Um, uh, this is um, a woman who lives in a little village uh, south of Sunnes. Um, she has a great heart for her village. And uh, as the food bank started, she was so inspired. And she called us and she, she said, I need to do something for my village. It's called Sukkinda. And uh, she's a lovely lady and she has a lot of energy. And uh, she, Together with her husband, she just started to distribute food to the, the low-income families and uh, people with drug issues and mental issues in her village. And she, um, she, I think she gets some money from uh, some uh, private person that donates and some organizations. But mostly, she is um, she does a lot of her own of her own initiative. Uh, she drives around with um, boxes with food to people. She, she goes to their doors and gives them the food. This is the very, um, the people that, they don't go out, some of them. They need to get the food brought to their doors. Uh, she helps them. 
so we have a lot of um, uh, people calling us who want to do the same. They want to start uh, hard for their village or their city. Um, yet we still don't know about anyone else who did it. It's just hard for Sokinda. Yeah, uh, oh yes, hard for Sildal also. So two organizations have been started. We don't have a finish like um, um, a program they can do because it's all about uh, personal initiative. You have to have a really uh, strong will to make it happen for the financial part. It's not easy. Um, so, um, but we hope a lot of uh, organizations will start like this. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, let's check if we have any questions. Um, maybe actually it's kind of related to previous question how you reach your families uh, who to help do you have a list or you they have to reach you mm -hmm. we work together with the the commune the Sonas commune and the employment service and others who who uh, bring people to us who need help uh, some days the commune calls me and says we have a family here who doesn't have food today can you help them and so we can and we pack the bags of groceries and they can come to our halls and pick out clothing if they need so this is one way also you know when one family has got help they will tell their friends and they will tell their friends mm -hmm. and this is how people get to know about it uh, mostly but uh, also we work with the women's shelters, for example, in Stavanger, when women come to their shelters, they uh, call us and they bring their women and they, uh, they come to pick up clothing and food if they need. Do, they do, do you do the check that uh, they actually have a low income or do you just believe? We have a register form that they need to fill out. But it's all based on um, just um, trust. Yes, it's based on trust mm. because we don't want to um, <laughs> check that further. Yeah, it's about trust. But sometimes, almost every time, we can see that this is people that uh, really it takes the courage to contact us. We see that it's not just uh, they're not uh, coming in expensive cars and they don't have very. Some of them have iPhones. <laughs> because some of them make their priorities to buy the iPhones, but um, but we 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 need to. They fill out the form. Mm -hmm. yes. This yeah. is uh, also information about if they have a job or how much job they have, mm -hmm. and uh, if they have more than sixty percent of their total income in their household, they are um, defined as a low income family in uh, Norway. So if you have more than 60% of your income coming from the public services, mm -hmm. you have been um, defined as a low income family. But it's quite a lot, uh, it's uh, quite a common feature for Norway. A lot of base, uh, a lot is based on trust. No. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I know that, um, yeah, we've got a question. Uh, how does love help you? And maybe others, yeah. The, the organization that you want to see. Maybe I, I think it's yes. uh, like how you cooperate with now. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, we have uh, uh, workers that come to us who need work training. So uh, if a person has been um, unemployed for a very long time, they've been living in a, in a low income situation for a long time, they can come to us and they can work and NAB will give them um, uh, salaries or we will get uh, money for having them. So they help us with their, uh, their work. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is basically the, the cooperation we have with NAB. Yes, and uh, uh, you have this um, interesting um, flow of people, uh, the people who are coming and uh, getting your uh, help, they are coming back in a while as uh, volunteers, right? Yes, this is a beautiful journey. It's very important because we, uh, we have a high, we, we see every individual as very um, important and uh, they have resources, all of them some of them might not know what they're good at because they never had the chance in their lives to try so we give them uh, opportunities and uh, people grow from that yes. 
it's uh, it's a lot about heart in your organization, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's it's actually uh, it's uh, to find space in your heart to help others. It's basically what charity is, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. For us, who was founded also in the church, it's about uh, the heart of God for people that we found, and that we want others also to make place in their hearts for other people. And it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we don't have uh, more questions, so I would like to thank you very, very much. And um, please ask your questions if, you, if you're wondering about something. And, um, and I think we are going to watch this once again. Yeah, the next one. Uh, let me introduce uh, the uh, last person to talk, but not least. Uh, uh, it's Beate Bjornsson from uh, Sunness uh, Volunteer Center. That's right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I was asked to tell a bit about uh, the, the services we provide and how we have dealt with the corona crisis regarding mobilizing uh, volunteers. And, and uh, systems for, for, uh, for help regarding that. First of all, I will say that the picture you see here is, uh, speaks for, for the, especially the one on the right side, speaks for itself. It's, uh, the Volunteer Center is a place for everyone. It's a low uh, threshold to get in. Uh, people from all over the nations, from North Africa, and the one from, and from the left is from, I think, from Somalia. And they have a good woman from um, Romania, Norwegian. So, so a lot of people from all over the world attend uh, the volunteer centers in, uh, in Norway. And we have a slogan called, everyone needs somebody and somebody needs you. So that quite sums up uh, the ingredient, the essence of the, uh, everyone is, as you told Maria, everyone is important and everyone has an asset uh, that can be used and help helping uh, others. Okay, next one, next slide. Uh, just a brief history uh, regarding the volunteer centers in Norway. We have about, actually we have now 468, I checked with Google, uh, volunteer centers uh, in Norway and the numbers are still growing. Uh, we are all different and worse, just like every inhabitant in Norway. And that's very important for the volunteer centers that they are and should be uh, different because they are, um, they are a mirror of the, the environment or the way they're organized or where they are situated because uh, somebody, someone are in, uh, in, in the big towns, others are in small municipalities, uh, other again are in organizations and they are different. So the, the, the volunteer centers are also different. And that's the way it should be in the way of how they run the activities, what they're focusing on, uh, and so on. Uh, some of us work with the young people and uh, elderly. Some are arranging festivals, uh, take elderly to the, doc the doctor. Uh, uh, take young people who walk in the woods, people who are disabled, people who need some help in the everyday life. Mm -hmm. But the common or the, the main thing uh, that regards us all is that we uh, want to make Norway a better place to live. Uh, and this is what uh, we do when we create networks between people. Therefore, again, our slogan is meeting between people. That's important. What happens when people meet? Uh, what we find interesting, yeah. And uh, we also have a common goal that we should be a hub or a link between people and organizations. And that means that uh, when I get volunteers uh, to my uh, volunteer center, I always ask them about what they want to do. And mm -hmm. sometimes they will be volunteers at my place, but it's also very important for me to have the local knowledge about different organizations in Sanders and their needs, the volunteer teams, the volunteers organizations, they, uh, they always need more volunteers. So it's very important for me to find out where, which organization is suitable for you. Yeah. So, so that's why I, I doesn't necessarily need, the volunteer doesn't necessarily need to be at Sanders Volunteer Center. It's very important that he will do his uh, best whatever is most needed. 
So, so you so are not like pay, no, no, no. taking uh, no, no, all no, the no, photos, no, 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 Mm -hmm. uh, one of the legs of the volunteer sector. Mm -hmm. It's so important for Norway. If you, if, you, if you take away the volunteer sector in Norway, somebody says that uh, Norway will stop, and that's true. Mm -hmm. We're very dependent on the volunteer sector in Norway. So, so uh, yeah. And uh, the Norwegian uh, Sanders Volunteer Center and all the rest of the volunteer centers, they are neutral regarding religion, political views, and sexu sexual orientation. That's very important for us. Uh, uh, yes, we do not compete. Compete. Uh, we do not um, compete. compete with existing volunteer work. As we, as I told you, we are more than happy to share our volunteers with, the, with other mm -hmm. organizations. Uh, and we don't. Uh, we don't. Uh, and it's very important also for us to do to to check that the volunteers don't do public work. There shouldn't be like workers and um, camouflaging or, or hiding uh, a need in, in the municipality sector for, for, for work. No, no politicians no, are no, welcome. No, no. Uh, yes, they are, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, and it's also very important for us to create a meeting place in the local community for people who want to spend some of their time with others. And, and as you told Maria, uh, to, to grow as a human being, to, to, to be useful, mm -hmm. that's very important. Um, and we're also uh, facilitating uh, volunteer uh, work and increased volunteer efforts. Uh, and we, as I told you, we should be a resource for the other voluntary teams and organizations. And we, 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 priority, we have this as a high priority. To, to, to facilitate other organizations. And we are also a tool for the government in uh, their aim to, to uh, reach the goals uh, uh, of uh, higher volunteering uh, through meeting places in the local community. Uh, and we also connect people and organizations together, I told that before, to create a good voluntary environment, good activities, and a good cooperation with the public in their local communities. Yes. Uh, so what can we do besides, uh, besides what can be our contribution besides uh, making uh, people, enable people to be volunteers? We also make projects, activities stronger so they can grow greater. So we are also a facilitator of uh, developing projects, festivals, as I told you, uh, different kinds of happenings in the local uh, communities in the city. Uh, we are very aware of not stepping in another people's bed. We don't want to steal volunteer from others. We don't want to uh, to, to stick a nose in other people's businesses, but we can facilitate and help them to grow. That's our main goal. We want to see organizations, see uh, public teams, uh, volunteer teams grow stronger. And we're also, uh, also a resource in finding grants and other uh, economical supports. We know the places where the organizations and teams can apply. Uh, and uh, enable them to, to get grants and money to carry out their, their good uh, volunteer work and efforts. And uh, uh, the Sannes Frile Central is owned by the Sannes Kommune. Uh, I'm the only one who uh, um, works there, but therefore we are also a good cooperation, uh, we have a good cooperation between the municipality and the volunteering sector. How many volunteers do you have? Uh, we have now about 300 uh, volunteers, but uh, when the corona crisis hit, we got uh, an additional of 300. But I will talk about that later. So, yeah. Um, as I told you, we, uh, we are owned by the municipality of Sannes. Some other, some volunteer centers are owned by um, 
voluntary teams or organizations within Sunnes. It's the municipality that's uh, it's the owner. And we have a high cooperation uh, between various municip municipal departments, services, areas like uh, Department for Living Condition, the Unemployment Office, NAR, as you were speaking about, to uh, talk about, the Child Welfare Center, Department for Elderly Welfare, Fair, Schools, and so on. So we, we work with all the different departments in San community uh, in order to enable them to be stronger in the volunteer field. Uh, we also, yeah. Well, we also have a strong cooperation with the other volunteer centers of our neighboring municipalities, and that's very important because we can learn very much from each other, though we are very different. So that that's why we have a strong um, uh, cooperation to 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 make our, uh, to, to to try to learn of each other and help each other to grow and, and do better work. And we also do, we started also with a very, uh, I think it, that's the future for uh, a very interesting part for us in the future is to work together with private companies and uh, business partners in different projects. And try to get um, uh, volunteer capital out of uh, the private sector. It's very important. There's a lot of things we can do there that haven't been done. We have, have something called Give a Day. Uh, it's, a, it's a project that uh, private sector company businesses, they can, uh, instead of going to, to bowling or to eat, have a meal and do something social with uh, the staff, they can do that as well. But before doing that, they can, uh, they can uh, do some volunteering work. They can uh, work for the elderly a day, paint uh, and, and, and clean out the outsides of an elderly home, for example. And afterwards, they can go to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's or we'll have a nice meal or something. So so in that way the company will have a good team building as well. That yeah. have a good meaning. So so that will bring people together but doing something very meaningful. Not just having fun, but uh, yeah. maybe having a meaningful job yeah. and then having yeah. fun. Yeah, it's very it, it's what it's very common in in England uh, and in the US. So we were in a and you know, we went to England on a study tour and. Uh, and we were inspired to do, to try to do the that kind of work. So that's why we established Give a Day. Yeah. But that's nice. that's the area we want to focus on uh, much more mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, as I told you, we arrange various activities and offers and help to start new one. Uh, when a volunteer came to come to our, our center, we always ask the volunteer, "What do you want to do?" What's your aim? What are your skills? And everyone has a skill or something that they can contribute with. And all of our activities, they are based on the wishes or the needs of the volunteers. We don't say, okay, we, I need to be off I need to, I would like to do an activity. That's not the way to do it. You always have to ask the volunteer. And they also, the boss and the, the employer, they, they have, they are um, main focus. If, if you start an activity without uh, the volunteers, uh, uh, basis in the volunteers, the activity will soon die out. Mm -hmm. So you have to, to, to really uh, to ask the volunteers and have in mind that they are the, the ones that are the, the bosses and who, who, who um, tells, tells, tell you what to do. And we also support uh, people in their content and mastery in life, as, as uh, yeah, the Fasanas also do. It's very important for people to have some meaningful um, things to do in their life, to be, uh, to be more than just for themselves, to be a difference between um, and help others, that's very important. Um, yes. The next one. And who are the volunteers? Uh, they are very, who are they? It's not easy to say, but uh, some, some um, thing in common is that they want to get to know the local community and to be social. They want to contribute and be useful. They want to be in control in use of time in the, in the activities. That's very important because I can't tell the volunteers that they, that they should work from 
say, 10 to 11. The volunteers are completely in control. He and she can say, I want to be on this activity, not on that. I want to spend my time on that period during the day or the night, not that period. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's very important to, to facilitate that. Yeah. Uh, but you also need clear and well-organized tasks. Uh, that's very important. Mm -hmm. If they come to an agreed uh, task or uh, activity and they find that the activity is not what they were thought it was supposed to be, you will lose them. So it's very important to, to, uh, to be very, uh, uh, check the quality in the, in the, in the uh, <coughs> tasks and activities. So and they are the bosses in volunteer work at the tool. Yeah, yeah, so they are the bosses. Yeah. And I know that you are using uh, a special, a very easy, but a, a very effective way to, mm -hmm. um, to connect mm -hmm. the need and the volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on your website. Yes. Yeah. So can, can we show it? Can show I, it? I see yeah. that, we are, uh, that we are closing yeah. to the end time. Yeah, yeah, so let's... Um, you can, if you show, um, if you take up the website, they will show you. Mm -hmm. Because when the Corona crisis hit, uh, we were challenged by the Norwegian Institute of Public Health that uh, gives the national guidelines, guidances regard, regarding uh, uh, how to handle the Corona crisis. And they said to all the municipalities that you need uh, each municipality need one person that could uh, that could be the link between the the civil society or the organizations or the volunteer sector, uh, and the municipality pointed at me and said you should do that because you are running the volunteer center. So I started uh, I started to to make a map in my head of all the voluntary work in Sanders. And there's a lot of organizations, and I contacted them, phoned them, wrote to them, and said, okay, this corona has hit us. Uh, we need to, to, uh, to coordinate and mobilize voluntary teams and organizations so they can be assigned to different tasks in order to fight the, the, the virus or the crisis. Uh, and we, did, we didn't know then uh, how hard it would hit. But all I talked to, all, I talked to the, all those um, main important big organizations, and they were very positive. And they said, the church said we could probably raise some thousands <laughs> if needed. And the Red Cross said we are on. Uh, big um, foreign organizations said we are on, and so on and so on. So all were very positive. And uh, after a week or so, we had more or less. 4,000 volunteers that were standing uh, ready to do, uh, do some work. Uh, yeah, very impressive. And, and, that's, and it shows the power of the volunteer sector because people are really ready to, to and they want to help, and they want to be uh, mobilized. Uh, so we, so we, so we yeah, here you see, here you see the website because it's, not, it's not in English. No, it's not in English. Like would, would you? Could, would you contribute? Do you need help? Because we have to split it because we thought that we need, first of all, we need volunteers. Because if people need help, we have to have volunteers that can help. And then we have, on this site, on this page, you can both, uh, you can both be a volunteer. You can both, and you can also be a person who needs help. Yeah. And you can describe what's uh, what okay. we can help if, 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 with. Yeah, to, yeah. If you want to help, help now, no, she now you're on. Uh, if you go back to, uh, I need, uh, I want to help. Mm -hmm. There you can yeah. see that we we uh, in the first place we had we thought that uh, all the municipality thought that people needed help to shopping to to practical things to go. Mm -hmm. A lot of elderly people or sick people would be standing uh, uh, at their homes. Mm -hmm. Not been able to go out to shop to get medicines or so on. Or just afraid. Or be on. Oh, they were afraid. Yes. So then we had, then we had this um, this opportunity to. I want to help with errands or practical uh, things. Like shopping. Shopping. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and the other one was uh, I need I need uh, I want uh, someone to call me. 
to talk to me because we thought that very many people will be, will be isolated, they will be in their homes, afraid, uh, cut off from their relatives, from their friends and so on. So then they obviously need to, to have some social contact. Yeah, yeah, need to be yeah, social. To be social. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just share. Just share or take a, or take a phone call yeah. and say, how are you doing? I say, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and that's something about uh, very important with the, pu um, the public health. Yeah. So a lot of people, they, uh, they t uh, showed up as volunteers for those two, those uh, two uh, puppets. Okay. And they wanted to be a cool friend, uh, yeah? And they wanted to be a practical helper. Yes. So through my system, we got 300. But then we had all the, the churches, the organizations, and there were a thousand people standing ready to help. That's wonderful. And yeah. so a lot of people are ready to help. Mm, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I would like to thank all the volunteers in Norway and uh, actually all around the world, all around the world for their will to help. Uh, let's check uh, quickly if we have any questions to answer. And we are running a little bit on the time. We are off. Um, uh, can we please help? I have to run to the next meeting. No, okay. <laughs> that was not a question. Um, I would like to say thank you very much and uh, a little a short conclusion. So uh, all the volunteer job, all charity job is based on a simple human need to help others, mm -hmm. to be useful. Uh, and um, it's all about heart space. It's all about... Um, will to to help others and it's important thing you said it's a, a wish to make your country your city your little village to a better place uh, it's all about that mm. it's all about to make a difference so i would like to ask everyone who has um, who are watching us right now who uh, who will be watching the webinar later uh, in the record. Uh, if you want to make your city, your village, your street to a better place, please run to the neighbor charity organization and uh, be a volunteer. Or if you want to start for your own and uh, help others. So you have uh, three beautiful examples and uh, it's just to start, right? And uh, in Arhangelsk, you have a very good organization, uh, NGO Garant, who is helping charity organizations to start, right? Am I right? So you can, uh, you can always ask for help. You can always ask uh, others for, for advice, where to start and what to do. They can also contact us direct, directly if they want. Yeah, yeah. Because and you can... we have a lot of documentation and uh, we can help, help yeah. them. Mm -hmm. The questions and maybe to get them started. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much, and thank you very much for all of you who are listening to us right now. And uh, thank you this beautiful and very, very. Um, uh, I don't know the word. Inspiring, inspiring, inspiring experience. <laughs> inspiring experience. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much from Russia. It was a great webinar and I think that um, I think I will turn on my camera now to see me because I'm the Russian partner in this project. My name is also Tatiana and uh, I'm very grateful to you for um, your speeches, for your experience, uh, for everything you shared today. And uh, I can say that uh, we will send a record of this uh, webinar to all the participants. And uh, we can also add your contacts if you don't mind, uh, if anybody wants to contact you dire directly and ask you some questions in English. And uh, we will also send to the participants a feedback form if uh, they have time to fill in. Maybe they still have some questions or some comments or um, anything they would like to say about our webinar. So if we get some feedback, we will also share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
yes, and I would like to thank our interpreter from Akangovsk, Maya Lutyanska. Uh, she has been doing a great job today, uh, translating simultaneously all the webinar, and uh, I hope that uh, the participants caught what they needed to caught to catch, and uh, um, I think that we both had a very good time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and bye and uh, have a nice day. Have a nice day. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you.